Thank you so much for coming. Welcome to the world premiere of the new film by Stella Maggie, The Weekend. Yes. My name's Cameron Bailey. I'm the artistic director here at TIFF. I want to thank you all for coming out. Thank you. Um, I want to acknowledge where we are tonight. Uh, we are on the traditional uh, land of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat First Nations, and the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of the New Credit. And we're grateful to be a part of this community on land that has been taken care of by our First Nations for thousands of years. A reminder, we have a, an award here called the Grolsch People's Choice Award at the festival. You decide who wins it, so please do not forget to vote. You can go online to tiff.net slash vote. You can do it any time except during a movie. So please vote for the films of your choice. Big thanks to UTA, United Talent Agency, and CAA, Creative Artists Agency, for bringing us this film. Do you know that Stella is from here? Does everybody know that? Stella Maggie, Toronto's own, actually Oshawa's own, Stella Maggie, if anybody from Oshawa is in the house. Um, she is just tearing it up right now. Three feature films in three years, which if you're in the film business, you know is very hard to do. Yes, her... Uh, Debut feature, Gene of the Joneses, in 2016, played here at the festival. <laughs> played all over. Her second film, Everything, Everything, with Amanda Stenberg, was in 2017. And now she's back here, 2018, with the world premiere of The Weeknd. Yes. <laughs> she's got a terrific cast in this film. Sashir Zamata, Ilan Noel. DeWanda Wise, Tone Bell, and Kim Whitley. You're going to see them all in a minute. I will just say this before I bring Stella out. There's still a little bit of room on the Stella Maggie bandwagon, so get on now. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming the director and writer of the weekend, Stella Maggie. What a welcome, thank you so much. Thank you everybody for coming here tonight. I've lost my voice. <laughs> Tiff's been fun. <laughs> um, I wanna just say thank you to Cameron for supporting me, to Tiff, um, everyone here for, from, you know, um, booking Jean of the Joneses and, and, and inviting me to be part of Share Her Journey. It's, it's been a pleasure. Um, and I, I want, a shout out to Toronto. I'm so happy to come home. My family is here, hopefully. They, they arrived on time. <laughs> um, and thank you to the, the beautiful, talented cast and producers and for making this happen. And we'll talk more after the, after the film. Thank you for coming tonight. crying like babies. <laughs> um, I want to introduce my cast to the stage. <clears throat> Dewanda Wise. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Elan Noel. and Sashir Zameda. Thank you so much for bringing your absolutely wonderful film to TIFF. Thank you all for being here. Um, I would love to start the Q&A off, and then we can open it up to the, the audience. And when we do that, I will do my best to repeat everyone's questions into the microphone so that we can all hear. 
But to begin, Stella, I was just hoping you, you could tell us a little bit about how this project came into fruition and how does it feel to be premiering it in your hometown? Um, it's been, I guess, uh, I wrote this script a few years ago um, and I was coming off my last film and just really wanted to do something in my kind of own personal voice again. Uh, and uh, I brought the script to Stephanie Elaine um, and Mel Jones, shout out. Um, and they they found Murata Pictures and we all made the film very quickly. Um, and these lovely people agreed to be in it and I wish Tone could be here. Um, but I slid into her DMs. <laughs> <laughs> stalked him over, over text, thank you, Lane. <laughs> um, and, and went out to Sashia because she was the one for it. Uh, and, and then we made it. How does it feel to be in Toronto today? Um, it feels amazing. I mean, it's my hometown. Like, I, I feel like that's why I'm even more emotional. <laughs> So one thing that struck me when I watched this film was how phenomenal the cast is. I was wondering if you could each speak to how you became involved in the film and what was the dynamic like and what was it like to work with Stella? Um, I met Stella um, and I was like, she lit. <laughs> um, and then I saw Gene of the Joneses and I was like, yes, please more. <laughs> and then she slid in my DMs and said, what are you doing in December? And I said, what are we doing, girl? <laughs> and that was pretty much it. She sent me the script. I loved it. I've never played a character like Margot before. Um, it's a fun world to step into. Um, and she told me Sashira was attached. And I've been wanting to see more from this woman since I first saw her on SNL. <laughs> so I had. The best time. <laughs> oh shit, you gonna make me cry and then you pass me the mic. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, Stella reached out and we, we Skyped and by the end of the conversation I was like, I really wanna work with this woman, she's cool as shit. And, um, and then I, I saw Gina the Joneses and same deal, I was like, this woman is incredibly talented, I really wanna work with her. And said yes. And yeah, I'm so glad to play a character like this because I don't see many characters like this on the screen, especially not characters who look like me. So uh, I feel very <laughs> fortunate. <laughs> I feel very fortunate to be able to do this. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing this with me. <laughs> um, really? Oh. <laughs> But yeah, no, it, it was a, I felt like it would be a privilege to work with Stella. She told me about the project and a couple of other projects that, I mean, she gave me some research on different directors to uh, check out. It was in a persimmon orchard, which I didn't even know that food existed. That was also a cool reason. Um, <laughs> we talked a lot about music. I mean, this, the thing about us was this, it was like this the entire time. Our off-screen chemistry was, you know, I wish we could have filmed some of that, <laughs> to be completely honest. Um, yeah. So I would love to ask about the character Zadie. Um, she's incredibly flawed, but also just so beautiful and realistic and wonderful as well. Um, sort of the question is twofold. Stella, why did you want to make a character like this the center of your film? And then for Sashir, um, what drew you to her, and, and how did you approach the role? I mean, I love comedians. I love comedians. <laughs> I love working with them. And, you know, I just wanted a girl who was had a very good excuse to be as funny and as as cutting as Zadie. Um, what was the rest of the one? <laughs> <laughs> you know, why her? Why her as the subject of, oh, of your right. film? I mean, I like women that are not simple, you know, and that are nuanced and that are strong and weak and funny and annoying. <laughs> you know, like we're all of those things and they, it can be endearing. So for me, it was about showing a very kind of interesting woman to watch for an hour and a half. 
Yeah, I really like this character because she, um, sometimes she sucks. <laughs> and there are definitely times when I was watching, I was like, God, she's a bitch. <laughs> but, oh my God. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I could, I, I could feel this role, I could feel this person because I think like that. Like, I, <laughs> I just don't always say the, those things out loud to people's faces. <laughs> I just say a lot to my friends behind closed doors. But, <laughs> but yeah, I, um, I like that we can show a character like this. I mean, there was a line straight up in the script that was like, I talk like a, a sidekick character in a romantic comedy, and she's the lead. And, and I, I usually play roles where I like bop in, and I'm like, here's a joke, and then I go away. Um, but it's, it's nice to be able to like have, like see that person, but also see the other parts of her, her vulnerable moments, her angry moments, her sad moments, because that's a human, and she should be recognized, and she should be in the world and, and seen. And uh, yeah, I felt, I felt like I really wanted to have this person seen. So we can open it up to the audience now. If you have a question, just put your hand up really high. Yes, right here. So the question is uh, about the music uh, at the end, um, the independence of Congo, and what was the inspiration for that? Thank you. Um, I mean, it was, it started out as definitely jazz in my head and Robbie Botos killed the score. Um, and, I, you know, I wanted to build around that and I kind of had this kind of classic pan-African thing I wanted to bring to it, you know, um, from like the 60s reggae, you know, to the Congo, to like, I, I, I felt like they all went together to Daniel Caesar, shout out to Daniel Caesar. <laughs> um, and I just loved how it all flowed together and I just wanted it to feel classic, you know, and those, all, those sounds just sounded, I, you know, I was just listening to music. I was just finding it, and I and I didn't picture that those that, that music at first when I was when I was writing. But then, it just it just played to the humor in kind of a in in the classic way that I wanted it to feel. Yeah, thank you for that question. Yeah, thank you. At the back there. So the question is about uh, Toronto's influ influence on Stella's work and if she would ever consider having a Toronto-based story. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like growing up in Toronto affected me a lot in my work. I mean, my family especially, you know, it's like to be from Toronto, to be black, you're probably Caribbean. And um, I'm Jamaican, so. <laughs> Um, and it's it's the humor of my family, the music I grew up, you know, hearing, and that's all through the the, the film and uh, that kind of cutting humor. You know, it's a lot to do with with my background um, and being first generation Canadian. <clears throat> and of course, I would I would say something here. I mean, I grew up as Cameron outed me in Oshawa. But <laughs> I shouldn't have told him that at lunch. Um, no shout out to Ashwa. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, of course, in the future, it's coming. Question here.
So the question is for uh, for Sashir. Um, I suppose if there was any improv, or oh, okay. So how much of her material ended up in the, if there was any input? Um, I didn't like pre-write any jokes to be in the, in the script. Stella for the stand-up in the beginning and the end of the movie. Stella wrote the stand-up, and then I punched it up. And then, yeah, it was like a fun collaborative thing where she like made the bones and then I, I felt like I was trying to channel how I think this character would do stand up, uh, which was interesting because I do stand up. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys know, I have an, al I have an album and a, a special called Pizza Mind. You can get on Amazon Prime. <laughs> um, and but like Zadie's different from me, and so I didn't want to do stand up. I mean, I'm like performing the way I perform, but the material is different than my material that I do in my life. And so it was interesting to try to like think about stand up through the lens of this character. Um, so yeah, so so some of those words were for sure mine. And then there was a, yeah a few improv pieces in there that were very fun that I was like, oh that made it in. That's great, <laughs> and that, and that's always fun. But yeah, it was such a fun environment on set because Stella just like gave us room to play and like the uh, the script itself is hilarious and then we were just able to like add to it because I feel like we were those people and it, it was really easy to add more to it. It was great. We have a question up front here. So the question is about the physicality of Zadie's character and um, sort of the contrast between her physicality and uh, the way she thinks of herself. I feel like we talked about that a bit. <laughs> all right, that was me, I guess. I did it all by myself. <laughs> With no help. Uh, <laughs> well, I know, like, I, I guess I read the parts where it's like I'm slouching a lot. I mean, you also just put it in the description of like sometimes my body was described in the scene. So I was trying to like, I, that informed who this person was to me more. And yeah, I, I tried to make her um, like pretending to be chill, but for sure not. There was, we like, what, what did we say? What did we say earlier? There's like some phrase, I can't remember. We said something earlier that was like fit it perfectly. But uh, it was a song. Okay, y'all had to be there. But <laughs> but like basically a mess on the inside and a mess on the outside, but trying so hard to like keep it all contained. And sometimes that came out in just like <laughs> a slouching, <laughs> lumbering kind of uh, gesticulation. And yeah. And also, some of that's probably just me, too. <laughs> just me <laughs> moving, because I cannot be still. <laughs> we have a uh, question over here. Yep. So here. Uh, so the question is about Sashira and Dewanda's characters and how they're both uh, incredibly strong characters but in different ways um, and sort of that tension between the two characters. I think, if you couldn't tell, Margot loves Zadie. Like Margot thinks Zadie's hilarious. She absolutely admires her candor um, and she would love her approval and her sign off. Um, to continue her relationship with Bradford. So I, I just loved it in the construction of the script itself, um, how this like non, <laughs> this non battle royale, you know, plays out. Um, but yeah, I think absolutely Margot was like, ah, that's so great, look how free you are over there. <laughs> 
Well, it's interesting when you ask that. I actually couldn't figure out which character you, was which, like which character <laughs> was the one who held back and which one was the one who let their emotions out. Because I feel like we both did that in so many different ways. Like I, even though I was, my character was very open and um, like blunt, that doesn't mean she's that I'm being honest. So like. That's a, a, it could be a defense mechanism that I'm putting up, even though I'm presenting as confident, as I'm still hiding emotions. Um, but then also sometimes I say the emotions, and then same with you, like I felt you were clear. very clear, <laughs> so honest the whole time, I wanna leave. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> Where the fuck have you been? <laughs> Yeah, I feel like both of us have shown moments of like push and pull, but and yeah, and I, but I, but still both very strong. And I and I also love that this character is not the bitchy other woman, you know, like this vapid whatever. Um, you know, you're not the enemy. I we I felt so bad for you. <laughs> I would feel so bad for this character, and um, yeah, I just wish I wish you well. <laughs> Margot marries a banker, it's fine. <laughs> All right, we have time for one more question. So right here. Oh, right there in the corner. So the question is for Yolan, and he plays the love interest in this film and also in, in Insecure. If you could tell, uh, <laughs> talk a little bit about the differences in the roles. Uh, the differences. Um, or similarities. Well, I feel like Daniel, especially this season, is uh, <laughs> really having a hard time being what you thought Margot character was, which was he, he, there's a lot of emotional restraint uh, and I think with Aubrey, there's a simplicity to him and his experience that when I read it, this I was just like, okay. I don't know, it's, it, it, it kind of felt like me, the closest character that I've, I've been able to play um, to me in a way, just the simplicity and like the purity. What, what? <laughs> and the purity of it, um, the cheer. <laughs> Well, that... Elon is a very sweet, <laughs> sensitive person. He's not Daniel. Stop calling him Daniel in the streets. <laughs> On that note, thank you so much for bringing your wonderful thank film you. to TIFF. Let's give it up for The weekend, directed by Stella McKee.